Hola, mi miembros de la familia. Mi nombre es Amaral Dago. Son bienvenidos de nuevo a mi canal. And to my English subscribers, hello family members. My name is Amaral Dago and welcome back to my channel. If you're joining me for the very first time, I'm originally from Nigeria and I bring you content based on how you can obtain your visas, immigration news, and how you can live your best life right here in España. If you think you can relate to that kind of content, please do consider subscribing by pressing the red subscribe button down below, turn on your bell notification so that when Whenever I post, you'll be the first to get notified. Liking this video if you like my kind of content, sharing this content to other people who you think may need problem solving videos just like this one. And now, leaving your thoughts on the set topic or subsequent topics you will love to see here on my channel. Disclaimer I am not an immigration lawyer, neither am I a recruiter. This video is brought to you based on my own personal experience. So of course, do well to do your research so that you'll be better informed before you take your next step. Without further ado, let's get straight into today's video. Welcome back guys. Okay, if you clicked on this video, you definitely know what I'll be sharing with you guys here. I've been in Europe for the past four years and I would like to tell you guys that there are some challenges that you must face as somebody who is currently trying to relocate or you just got into a new country that is different from your home country guys there's no way of avoiding these kind of challenges because you are an immigrant an immigrant is somebody who has left your home what you're used to the life you've created for yourself and you've moved to a new location there are several uncertainties several things that you did not factor in when trying to relocate that you cannot just you just have to navigate your way through to come out on scans on the other side if you even know about them it's always better it prepares you better in order for you to like brace up yourself to accept it and to prepare better if you're informed about something it doesn't seem that hard so yes that is what i want to do on today's video in no particular order the first challenge i would like to state here is starting afresh so you have left your home country probably in your home country you have actually gotten your degree or your secondary school certificate and you have done some things for yourself some people have even done their first masters some people have a good job and they've already ascended the career ladder to a certain extent they are doing well you know in their jobs your family you have a balanced lifestyle your children are in school everything is kind of stable as you would like it and now you're relocating you're practically picking up your pieces and packing up yourself into a tiny box and you're moving to a new location in this location you don't have any family member in this location probably and even if you have family members they might not be living close to you so it's not like you'll be seeing them on a daily basis there are several uncertainties that would be that must be in this new location so starting afresh is something that you cannot avoid you need to start afresh because your educational qualification might not be the same with the country you are relocating to and in that case you will need to now upgrade get an equivalence of what is acceptable in that place so basically your qualification might not be good enough for you to continue or further your education and for jobs you the experience you have is from home if you don't have any experience in that country you're kind of limited because of this so starting afresh is definitely going to be a big challenge there are several things you don't know you're in a new country where the custom of the people is different the behavioral pattern family and um, structure the way their lifestyle is different social and cultural lifestyle is totally different i'll also mention this so if you had you were driving before you had your driver's license that driver's license might not, you might not be able to use it to work in the country where you relocated to your finances the currencies that you use in your country it will not be the same with the current currency that is going to be used in this place you have to keep converting and you go to the malls you look at a particular price in your head you're calculating based on your own your home currency and you find out how more to buy things sometimes can even be difficult for you yeah it should be taken into consideration 
The next thing I'd like to talk about is housing. Guys, relocating to a new country can be all sorts of tedious. And housing is one important aspect of relocating that has to be sorted in order for you to get, you know, relaxed, in order for you to get settled. So if you don't have like a, a, an accommodation, you cannot get settled. Housing requirements is usually not foreigners friendly. It's not. Because the landlords or the agents here would have like the separate requirements for people who are not indigents of that country. If they find out that you're just coming in for the very first time, you don't have a job yet, you've not secured a job, no, no job contract, you don't have, they don't know you, you're new. It's going to be very difficult for them to want to lease their house to you or rent their house to you because they are scared that you might not be able to fulfill your financial obligations concerning that apartment. Even if you show them money in your bank account, and look, I have money in my account, I'm good to go, I can do this. Sometimes these landlords don't budge just because of the uncertainties that come to these things. The next one is the social lifestyle. Okay guys, so social lifestyle here in the abroad is absolutely almost non-existent. <laughs> Why do I say this? Because coming from my home country, we have neighbors, we have family members, we have church people or church members. These people are very close to you. You see them practically in a week, like you will see them. Sometimes you even see these people every day. They know what's happening in your life. Like you can live in your house and you would be sure that your children are sorted for people who have kids your children can go and stay in the neighbor's house you go to work and you're not even thinking about whether they are hot you're, you're, you're rest assured that they're well taken care of but in this place it's not the same you're the one you're going to be acting as the nanny the caregiver the nurse the driver the cook the cleaner, the gardener, you are everything. You're going to wear all the caps. You and your husband are the ones that are going to take care of your children in any way that they need to be taken care of. So if you're not somebody who has the capacity to multitask, hmm, moving abroad may be a no for you. You have to now, you know, delegate these things to helps or people who, who you pay. You'll be doing that at a very high cost and that is just there's no shortcut around it so yes social lifestyle here is very very reduced because everybody will wake up in the morning and they're off to work there's nobody that's looking to come and look and check how you are that's why you find out that some people die in their apartment and nobody will find out until the smell or the stench starts to ooze out of the apartment sorry to say but this is exactly what happens in the abroad you can become very lonely quickly in abroad it goes without saying so the friendship mm -hmm. to get friends here you have to make a conscious effort and even at that those friendships they are not something that will be there for you when you need them sometimes you can have like surgery in the hospital you have maybe you have a need and you really need somebody to help you you will not find anybody you it's not easy to find somebody and even those people that you call your friends when you call them they'll tell you that they are at work and sometimes you don't blame it's the system the system here is work 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 you just you have to work this fourth one is one that i experienced when i came new guys let me tell you a short story when i was when i was planning to relocate to join my husband uh, my husband used to tell me that uh, will I be able to work in Spain? Will you be able to work in Spain, Amma? Will you be able to work? I told him, ah, I'm a strong girl. Oh. I was born in Lagos. I can work anywhere. Why not if not? How do you even see me? Do you think I'm, I'm, I'm soft? I'm like a soft girl. I'm not a soft girl. Oh. I can work. He told me working here is different from working in Nigeria. But you know, we really say it in so many words. So I was assuming that it won't be that bad. How bad can it be? Fast forward to when I came to Spain. Hmm. <laughs> the first job I did, I saw 30. Like literally, I saw, I saw what I was not expecting to see. And it was really mind-blowing. 
I couldn't understand how people will stand up for eight hours without sitting down and you're supposed to walk like a robot. How is this possible? Like, I didn't get it. So that shift from what you're used to, to this new whole idea of you need to be efficient, you need to be fast, you need to do this, you need to do that, is totally different. And this one, this work one, would definitely stress anybody who is coming from a country where things are a little laid back. In Spain, things are laid back, but when it comes to work, the work situation, the work environment, my dear, they expect you to put 110%, not just 100%. So don't just do like a mediocre job. Like your work has to be perfect. That is what is expected of you. If they see something that is less than perfect, you can you will not even you will not get a permanent job. That's why you see a lot of people abroad. They are, they work here today. Tomorrow they are no longer there because their boss is unsatisfied with what they what he got. This next one, guys, is the ogakpatakpatakpata of all of them. Hmm language barrier hey <laughs> if you're going to a country where they don't speak the language that you speak back at home definitely know that you have a big trojan horse in front of you and you need to sort that trojan horse you need to clear it so what do you do you go to language school you have to learn the language because if you have a limitation you don't have the level of proficiency that is required hmm? In order to match communication, there are several things that will not be able to happen for you. Number one, you will not be able to get a job that you want. You might get jobs that you don't want, jobs that don't require you to speak all the time. You, you know, that kind of jobs you'll be getting. If you're okay with that, then it's fine. But this language barrier cuts across several things. You need to communicate. When you go on the streets, you don't speak english here you need to communicate at the supermarkets you need to communicate in your children's school you need to communicate in the hospital you need to communicate in the bus station you need you need communication and that communication has to be done in the language of the people how do you not integrate if you cannot speak that language and for some people who have a difficult time in bibing another person's language you definitely have a big trojan horse that you need to sort out. Oh my goodness, this one is a real big time challenge and it's expectations from home. So immediately you relocate. Hmm? Once it has been established that you are now in the abroad, my brother, my sister, expectation has gone this high. It has gone this high because everybody expects that people in the abroad have where they used to pick money from. It has gone this high because everybody believes that immediately you get there, there is job, there is security, there is a, an opportunity to even be earning from the government. You know, your life has changed and you need to be paying them salary at home. And as this expectation has changed, that is how your phone, the amount of calls you receive has also increased. In a, in a week, if you, do, if you usually don't even receive call, you probably might have been doing well when you are at home. But because you're with them there, they won't really consider that you're doing better than them. But immediately you relocate, even if you don't even have a job. Nobody wants to hear that you don't have a job. What, what they want to know is that there is a, something that came up in village and that, that your father swallowed pin and they need to take him to hospital and they will tell you how that your cousin that you love so much needs money to go to school that you need to bring money to sort that your that your cousin out so expectation just skyrockets and if you're unable to manage this you will just be creating a lot of enemies out of nowhere most people at home don't understand the hard work that it takes in order to make a penny in abroad. They feel that it's easy, but it's not. It's not. This next one is something that everybody must experience and that is not quite fitting in. Okay, you're coming as a foreigner. You've left your family members. 
you've left your home that you know you're used to you've left a culture lifestyle that you know and you're used to and you've moved on to another location remember you're in this new location you are not a citizen even if you have their passport after maybe neutralization you're still not born there you're, you, you the culture is still foreign to you regardless and even if you say okay after some time let me go back and go and visit home a lot has when you get home you're like a stranger you're not you don't quite fit in you know a lot of things must have happened by the time you get back home you know bad days have passed burials of people that you love so much have happened you are not there um children that you knew when they were little and you had a relationship with them because you relocated abroad you don't have that relationship now they are grown and they're looking at you like you're a stranger so you don't quite fit in at home and you don't quite fit in abroad so you see you're always floating that's where an immigrant will remain you don't there's nowhere you fit in regardless of how long you stay abroad and whether you decide to come back home to visit this um, challenge is called weather challenge and this challenge happens for only those who come for a tropical re region and they are now relocating to a country that is not so tropical yes so um uh, for me this is the personal experience when i where i am currently is valencia and valencia the weather is not so bad unlike the northern regions in spain but it still shocked my marrows and my body everything in my body was telling me that this weather is not giving <laughs> Irritating. Then now having to like live your day-to-day -day life in cold, you it, it's not it's not the same with where you're coming from. It can never be the same. The weather is something that your body has to now start coping with, and it will take years. It can take like two years for your body to now adjust to the weather of the new country. Another challenge that you have to face to career wise you might have been like a director in your place of work once you leave where you are from and you're moving to a new place you will not get that level where where you were before you relocated nobody is going to give you that same level or maybe by the time you do some courses in that country you're not you're not able to level up again most times you are kind of demoted to a low lower level because you don't have the experience in that country the experience you have is from another country sometimes you see people who are doing so well back at home they're in a new country and they're just doing like just one kind of job that they're not even happy with and this is because they just have to make do with what they see in order to make ends meet but this phase where you're not quite comfortable with what you're doing is a real phase and you just have to cope with it during this time because nobody's going to pay your bills i want to believe i've been able to educate you of some of the challenges that you must um experience here i will now also like to state here in order for you to like be able to navigate this period very well i would enjoin you to please join communities that can help you where you can ask questions where you can you know get ideas on how to cope better um, if you have like a church, please join if you belong to a religious organization It's very important to join them there. You will see people who can help you You know people who have been in your shoes before and they can help you navigate and um, You can join Facebook groups as well. Maybe if you are new in a particular country just click on Facebook There are several groups that you will fit in perfectly into remember I work with authorized Spanish translator and I can bring this service to you if need be please do well to use my details on this video to contact me I will be able to bring this service to you in 24 hours so contact me all right also if you want to legalize your documents in Nigeria I can also do this for you thank you very much for joining on this video and do well to binge another of my informative content Please don't forget to subscribe, like, share, and leave your comments in the comment section. Till the next one. See you. Bye-bye.